Hi everyone, and welcome to The Day Before. Today I'm going to do a book review, sort of, or the books I've read in February and March. I know it's kind of late, um, but this April I've been really busy. One of my sons had a piano recital this month, and then uh, my son... My oldest son is graduating next week from college, so I've been super busy. I haven't had much time to devote to uh, my YouTube channel, uh, but after my son graduates, I should have a lot more time to invest. Uh, I think that May will have a lot of videos coming your way, so I have a lot of great ideas and such, so I'm really excited. As you can see, above my head, are all the books I read in February and March. Okay, so February is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson, The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson, very good books, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo, Conversion by Katherine Howe, and a Lizy Story, I believe, I don't know how to say uh, Lizy or Lizzie's name. I, I said it in my head, Lizy. So Lizy's Story by Stephen King. Um, I think that's all for February. Let me check really quick in my notes here. Oh, no. I read Bird by Bird also in February by Anne Lamott. Then March, I read A Simple Favor. Ooh, let's, okay by Darcy Bell, and the last four books I read in March were all by Ruth Ware. She's an excellent author. I read In a Dark, Dark Wood first, and then The Death of Mrs. Westaway, then The Woman in Cabin 10, and finally The Lion Game. And ironically, in that order, were my favorite to my least favorite, but I love them all. So, I already gave you too much information. I was going to talk about that last. Uh, this month, I haven't had much time to read. I'm reading Shane Dawson's book. One of them. Let me check in my Kindle. It Gets Worse by Shane Dawson. I'm reading that this month. And then on audiobook, I'm reading uh, Connections and Death. Let me check who that author is. I think it's uh, Nora Roberts, but she writes as J.D. Robb. But I need to double check because it could be... Yeah, it's J.D. Robb, uh, Connections and Death. So those are the two books I'm reading right now. And those are the only books I've been able to read this April just because I've been so busy. But let's go on to the books that I read in February, okay? So Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson, I read that before and I really loved it. I just could not wait until The Vanishing Stair came out. And I'll read to you a little bit from uh, the summary from Goodreads about Truly Devious. And then I don't want to uh, read too much about The Vanishing Stair because I don't want to give anything away. But... Um, Okay, let's start with Truly Devious. Ellingham Academy is a famous private school in Vermont for the brightest thinkers, inventors, and artists. It was founded by Albert Ellingham, a early 20th century tycoon who wanted to make a wonderful place full of riddles, twisting pathways, and gardens, a place he said where learning is a game. And in the book, um, it sounds like Ellingham Academy is amazing. Uh, Maureen Johnson does an excellent job of describing the setting for this book. The characters are just jumped to life off of the page. And uh, <clears throat> I just loved it. I love mysteries. So um, moving on, it says, shortly after the school opened, his wife and daughter were kidnapped. That's Albert Ellingham, the founder of the school. The only real clue was a mocking riddle listing methods of murder signed with the frightening pseudonym Truly Devious. It became one of the great unsolved crimes of American history. True, 
true crime aficionado Stevie Bell is set to begin her first year at Ellingham Academy and she has an ambitious plan. She will solve this cold case. That is, she will solve the case when she gets a grip on her demanding new school life and her housemates. The inventor, the novelist, the actor, the artist, and the jokester. But something strange is happening. Truly Devious makes a surprise return, and death revisits Ellingham Academy. The past has crawled out of its grave. Someone has gotten away with murder. So, I also, that's a very good book. I mean, I was able to reread it within a couple of days. It wasn't boring because I was rereading a book. Very good. Very well done. And then the Vanishing Stare summary from Goodreads. I'll read you some of it, and then I'm going to leave some of it out so that it doesn't give away anything from the book Truly Devious, in case you haven't read that yet. So it says, all Stevie Bell wanted, oh, and also this is from Goodreads. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. All Stevie Bell wanted was to find the key to Ellingham, the Ellingham mystery, but instead she found another mystery. Now, I put another mystery, so in place of what it actually says, so that you don't, so I don't give any spoilers away. Anyway, the crimes of the past are still waiting in the dark. Just as Stevie feels she's on the cusp of putting it together, her parents pull her out of Ellingham Academy. Great. Right? So for her own safety, they say, she must move past this obsession with crime. Now that Stevie's away from the school of topiaries and secret tunnels and her strange and endearing friends, she begins to feel disconnected from the rest of the world. Then someone arrives at her house to offer her a deal. He will bring Stevie back to Ellingham immediately. In return, she must play nice. I'll just say that. Okay, the tantalizing riddles behind the Ellingham murders are still waiting to be unraveled, and Stevie knows she's so close. But the path to the truth has more twists and turns than she can imagine, and moving forward involves hurting someone she cares for. In New York Times bestselling author Maureen Johnson's second novel of the Truly Devious series, Nothing is Free and Someone Will Pay for the Truth with Their Life. So, excellent book. I read the both of them probably within four days. And um, I'm on the edge of my seat waiting for the third book in this series. It's very good. Um... I love Stevie Bell, the main character, and uh, I'm kind of like that. I like uh, Poirot in the Agatha Christie novels. Um, he's my favorite character of all time in her novels, and, uh, you know, Maureen Johnson kind of reminds me of Agatha Christie in her writing, so <coughs> if you like Agatha Christie, you will probably like that. I know they're young adult novels. Let me see. Okay. I know they're young adult novels. There is what the covers look like. But, I mean, I'm older than young adult, and I love them. I think they're excellent mysteries, so I recommend them. And then uh, the life-changing magic of tidying up. What I did, basically, was I listened to the audiobook, and I uh, wrote notes down. I acted as though it was like a lecture. So um, I have seven pages of handwritten notes from this book, and I really enjoyed it. The largest takeaway from this book that I received is when you are decluttering, do it by item and not by room. So basically, uh, don't declutter one room and then the next. <coughs> Gather all the clothes in the house, and that's the first item that she recommends is gather all the clothes in the house and declutter those. Declutter the clothes first. And uh, it makes a lot of sense. You know, I've been, I haven't tried the Marie Kondo method yet, but I have uh, been decluttering slowly so that when I do attempt this, um, it makes it just a little bit easier. Um, so when I have time, I'm not... Marie Kondoing my house whenever my son's graduating from college. I just 
I cannot do that. But I can plan ahead, and I do plan to uh, Marie Kondo my house. And if you guys want to maybe see some of that process, let me know in the comments. Uh, the second thing I took away from this book is to keep things that spark joy for you and to let go of things that don't and that no longer serve a purpose in your life. And three, just appreciate the things you have. Uh, there has been some talk about Marie Kondo stating that you can only keep 40 books, but I didn't get that from reading her uh, book. I got from it that um, these rules are not meant to be like very rigid. Uh, I read more than the average person. It sparks joy for me to have a library of materials that I love to read in my house. So it would uh, be kind of insane to expect a person like me to completely transform my library every few months because I run out of reading material. Um, if, I, if having a lot of books sparks joy for you, keep them. You know, as long as you have the room. I have bookshelves all over my house. I have plenty of space to keep more than 40 books. Keep them if that's what sparks joy for you. So, my next book that I read, woo, Conversion, that was a reread, and I really love this book. It is about uh, people going to uh, St. Jones Academy, which is uh, like a boarding school, basically, and um, it's a really interesting book. Uh, I wish that Katherine Howe put out books like Stephen King. I've read all of her books. They come out maybe once a year or every two years. And I really enjoy her writing. So I wish she'd come out with more books. But uh, rereading her books, I, I love to do. So I don't have a problem with that. And I'll read a bit of the summary from Goodreads. And uh, then we'll move on because there's a lot of other books I want to talk about. So it's senior year at St. Jones Academy and the school is a pressure cooker. College applications, the battle for valedictorian, deciphering voice texts. Through it all, Colleen Rowley and her friends are expected to keep it together until they can't. First, it's the school queen bee, Clara Rutherford, who suddenly falls ill or into controllable, uncontrollable tics in the middle of class. Her mystery illness quickly spreads to her closest clique of friends. Then more students and symptoms follow. Okay? So the media descends on Danvers. Uh, it becomes a humongous uh, fiasco. And then Colleen, who's the main character, has been reading The Crucible for extra credit. And she comes to realize what nobody else has. Danvers was once Salem Village, where another group of girls suffered from a similarly bizarre epidemic three centuries ago. So I love that uh, this book ties in the Salem Witch Trials and the happenings during that time period to uh, the spell of girls breaking out with a mysterious illness at St. Jones Academy. So it's a really good book also for, I know I'm in my 30s, but it is a good book for uh, teenage girls. If they are studying about the Salem Witch Trials, I really recommend this book. It will give a, a new spin and something, something to think about for them if they're studying about the Salem Witch Trials. Um, the next book is Lizzie's Story by Stephen King. I've had this book for forever. Um, I just never got around to reading it, and I'm so glad I did. There's the cover. It's a very pretty cover. So, um, Lizzie DeBusher Landon lost her husband, Scott, two years ago. This is also a summary from Goodreads. After a 25-year marriage of the most profound and sometimes frightening intimacy, Scott was an award-winning, best-selling novelist and a very complicated man. Early in their relationship, before they married, Lizzie had to learn from him about books and blood and bulls. Later, she understood that there was a place Scott went, a place that both terrified and healed him, that could eat him alive or give him the ideas he needed in order to live. 
Now it's Lizzie's turn to face Scott's demons. Lizzie's turn to go to the Booyah Moon. So if you guys read this, you'll find out uh, what all that's about. And I'm not going to finish the uh, summary. Uh, but I will say it's a very good book and I recommend it. Um, so I'm very glad I got to reading it in February since I've had it for so long. I mean, I've had it for probably a year. Maybe even two years. And that is the uh, benefit of having tons of books. Like we were talking about after I was talking about Marie Kondo's book. And the next book I read was, uh, okay, where are we at? Uh, Bird by Bird by Anne Lamont. And I actually listened to the audiobook for this one. I'm glad I did because uh, Anne Lamont herself was the one who was reading it. So it's a book about writing, and I've never read anything by Anne Lamott before, but I probably will read more of her work in the future now that I read this. It's highly entertaining, this book is, Bird by Bird, and I learned a lot from it. And probably the biggest thing I learned is that I don't have to write with the intention of being published someday. I can write for myself, and that took a lot of pressure off of me I do a lot of writing, and I always try to formulate it in a way that if I were to try to get it published someday, that that would be doable. But uh, writing for myself, it just gives me more freedom to basically say what I want to say. And, you know, if it's not something that I would want to share with the public and someday I'm like, I want to publish this book, um, then I can edit those things out. Or I could leave them. Find a way to make it so that uh, if it's referring to a person, it's completely anonymous. Or if it's referring to a place and I don't want to refer to that specific place, I can um, rewrite it in a way that nobody will think of the place I'm talking about. So um, when I write for myself, I've found that it's therapeutic. After reading this book, I've been able to write a lot more every day. So if uh, your goal is to be a published writer, maybe try writing as though no one's ever going to see what you're writing. Um, it really opened things up for me and really helped me out. I love this book. I also recommend this book for anyone who wants to be a writer. Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. I have a couple of others. Um, On Writing by Stephen King is excellent. And then the first five pages, and I'm not sure who the author is for that book, uh, but it's the only book with that title, The First Five Pages. I recommend that book as well. So uh, I really do love her writing, and I will be reading more. Now the next book, okay, we're getting into March now. The next book is A Simple Favor by Darcy Bell. And that is an excellent book. I know there's been a movie made um, based on this book. And I haven't watched it yet, but I'm going to when I get the extra time. Um, but here is the summary from Goodreads. She's your best friend. She knows all your secrets. That's why she's so dangerous. A single mother's life is turned upside down when her best friend vanishes in this chilling debut thriller in the vein of Gone Girl and The Girl on the Train. It starts with a simple favor, an ordinary kindness mothers do for one another. When her best friend Emily asks Stephanie to pick up her son Nicky after school, she happily says yes. Excuse me. <coughs> I have allergies every year. Okay. Nikki and her son Miles are classmates and best friends, and the five-year-olds love being together just like she and Emily. A widow and stay-at-home mommy blogger living in woodsy suburban Connecticut, Stephanie was lonely until she met Emily, a sophisticated PR executive whose job in Manhattan demands so much of her time. But Emily doesn't come back. She doesn't answer calls or return texts. Stephanie knows something is terribly wrong. Emily would never leave Nikki, no matter what the police say. Terrified, she reaches out to her blog readers for help. She also reaches out to Emily's husband, the handsome, 
Reticence Sean, offering emotional support. It's the least she can do for her best friend. Then she and Sean receive shocking news. Emily is dead. The nightmare of her disappearance is over. Or is it? Because soon, Stephanie will begin to see that nothing, not friendship, love, or even an ordinary favor is as simple as it seems. So I really like this book. Uh, it's not like one of my favorites. It's still good. Um, I would say that it's not a waste of time to read it if you have some free time. It's not the first book I would choose to pick up if I knew more about it. But I really enjoyed it. I read it very quickly for a book that, say, I would give like three out of five stars to it. Um, whereas, like, for Truly Devious, I would give that book like five out of five stars. Um, but if you, I knew a person's preferences for reading material and I knew that they liked this sort of story, I would definitely recommend it to them. So in March, I kind of had a Ruth Ware reading extravaganza, and I read all of her books. I did read them um, through audiobook because Imogen Church is the woman who reads all four of these books on audiobook, and I love her voice, basically. So I recommend all of her books, whether it be an e-book, a physical book, like I have... The Death of Mrs. Westaway. Just look at that cover. That's why I picked it up. Who says you can't judge a book by its cover? Because this is excellent. And the cover is re the reason why I picked it up. Um, I don't want to uh, risk giving anything away. All of these books by Ruth Ware, I would give five out of five stars to. Even though I do have favorites. Uh, I recommend them all, especially if you like Agatha Christie and stuff like that. I would recommend them all. So there are elements in each book where it's kind of predictable, and you can predict where the story is going, but then you think you know everything, where the story is going, and there's always a twist. I haven't figured out like all the twists of the book uh, by the very end of the book in any any of the four. So um, I would say maybe she writes like Agatha Christie too, in a way. And uh, Agatha Christie is my favorite writer of all time. So um, my favorite was In a Dark, Dark Wood. It was the first one I read, and that kind of got me onto the kick of reading all of her books and reading them on audiobook because I enjoyed Imogen Church's voice so much. And then The Death of Mrs. Westaway. And I actually bought this book a long time ago. I actually bought this around maybe Christmas or even in the fall of last year. And I just never got around to it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I picked this book up literally just because of the cover. I think it's beautiful. Um, that's my next favorite, The Death of Mrs. Westaway. And then The Woman in Cabin 10 and finally The Lying Game. I'm not saying I dislike The Lion Game at all. It was just my least favorite of Ruth Ware's books, which I would all give a five star to. Five out of five. I mean, seriously, she's an excellent writer. I recommend all of them. I uh, finished each one within a couple of days. These are like 10, 11, 12 maybe hour books on audiobook, and I finished them within a couple of days, each one of them. So I will be looking out for more books from Ruth Ware. I do plan to read all of her books when they come out. So um, that is my book review stuff for uh, February and March. I really enjoy, I had a good time reading in those two months. It's been harder in the month of April, so I may do like a combination. If I can read more books in May, I'll do an April and May um, books I've read video for you guys. Um, but I mean, February and March was excellent, so I'm not missing out this month. I'm taking it slowly on the two books I'm reading. It's probably the only two books I'm going to get to read this month, and that's okay. 
In May, I'm going to have so much more free time. I cannot wait. So, do you guys like my ponytail hat I found? I was looking forever for a ponytail hat that didn't have Velcro. I went ahead and ordered this one and another black one. Um, if you want me to, um, put a link in my next video for these hats, let me know. Um, it said in the description there would be a Velcro closure. I went ahead and ordered them anyway because it came in a pack of two. This, the gray one, and then another black one. And uh, it actually doesn't have a Velcro closure on it, so I was like pleasantly surprised. If you guys like this hat, let me know and I'll put an Amazon link in the description of my next video. So I will see you guys later and you guys have a wonderful day. And also, if this video tends to, if it comes out on Easter, I want to wish you guys a happy Easter. If it doesn't, I hope you guys had a happy Easter. All right, see you later. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.